Hey everybody, uh, welcome. It's February 22, 2024, and this is the UBC uh, <laughs> um, Career Coaching Masterclass uh, Information Session. So you're coming here to learn a little bit more about what uh, the program has to offer. Uh, and joining us today as your hosts are Norman Amundsen, Amundsen and uh, Spencer Niles, also goes by Skip. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I, I just want to hand, I'll hand it over there. I just want to let everybody, let everybody know that uh, we're recording the session. So uh, you'll get a copy of this, uh, a link to it later on today. Uh, Norm and, and Spencer will, will remind you of that again. And then also, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just blanking. And I'm sure there was something else there. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll just hand it on over to Norm and Skip and you can get on going. I'm going to duck out now. Norm, I'm going to make you, I'll make you both co-hosts so you can uh, control as you need. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right. Take care. Well, it might be a good thing to just start by saying there's one person who's missing this here, and that's Andrea Fruling, that's what uh, I was say. who's uh, <laughs> does a lot of the directing of this course. And uh, unfortunately, she uh, she just got sick, like very violently sick about 15 minutes ago. So we are uh, going to sort of plug on. I mean, I sort of think this this uh, session is really uh, in some way um, uh, a problem. I mean, last week we had to cancel. This week, Andrea gets sick just before we begin. But anyway, let's see what we can do, and we'll talk about uh, what you know what the session's like. We had uh, people here who can talk, tell you what their experience was last year in in the class. Uh, Lawrence, thank you for being here. And uh, Skip, anything you want to add to that? Well, we have others, right? Who who else was uh, is a, an alumni of uh, the training? I think we have a few folks. Uh, is that right, Brian? Who else is here from? You've got Lawrence and Kristen. Lawrence and Kristen. Lawrence Fan and Kristen. Okay. Fantastic, two stellar graduates. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, Norm, Norm, I'm just going to remind you that a key part of our theory is adaptability. Yeah. And so here we go with our chance to demonstrate adaptability. That's what we're going to be doing here in this in this session. And yeah, we're uh, we are really excited to have the chance to talk with you a bit about it. Uh, as Norm said, Andrea is really um, and it, it, if you know Norm, Andrea, and myself, you know that of the three of us, Andrea is the details person. <laughs> so. Uh, in Myers Briggs language, it'd probably be something like an INFP versus uh, E something something J. So, uh, uh, and Norm and I are the uh, the former. But um, Norm, maybe we could talk a little bit about you know the kind of the basis of the course, and then we could talk something about the the components of the course, just the structure generally, uh, and and then uh, and then maybe what uh, the folks are are. Alum, our alums could talk about, you know, their their experience of the course and and in particular what they were able to take from it to enhance their practice as coaches, and uh, and then and then obviously time for Q and A. We're here for another three hours, right? Is that uh, <laughs> this point? Does that sound okay. good, Norm? If we sounds if, great, let's uh, let's roll with it. Yeah. And, uh, talk a little bit about um, the theory behind it and also um, what you can expect. Um, it's, I mean, it really they is focused on kind of this combination of career coaching and the hope action theory and practice and putting that all together into um, an extended session. I think it goes Remind me, remind me of the date, Skip. Uh, I think you got them down there. I think it's... I uh, got them here. I'll get them for you, Norm. Anyway, don't, it, you, don't um, you worry. I think there's eight um, eight live sessions, and then there's some work outside of that. But um, it's the theory itself, in terms of what we're doing, we're, we are really... Um, I, I really enjoy doing these courses because they they combine so many different elements. I mean, you're, you're going to have access to uh, a video library that we've kind of compiled, which lays out lots of, you know, discussions, uh, role playing, all that kind of information. Um, you're also going to have these 
face-to-face -face sessions. Um, you're going to work in triad groups. Uh, there's going to be a case study. Uh, and you're going to do some work with uh, a client for a while. So there are lots of different elements to the course. It's it's sort of not um, just talking heads. You're going to be a lot of a lot of breakout rooms, people doing things. Sometimes in the sessions we do demonstrations. There's a lot of different elements to it. And one of the key elements, of course, is hope action theory, which is quite interesting. Um, Skip, do you want to give sort of a brief summary of what that's all about? Sure, yeah. Well, um, hope action theory is really a theory that was developed by uh, Norm, myself, and a person by the name of Hyung Jun Yoon and, uh, about 15 years ago. And we really wanted to focus on what we saw as a gap in the career development world. And that gap was uh, uh, addressing hope, more specifically, the lack of hope and uh, how to create and how to help people create and sustain a sense of hopefulness as they look towards their future and consider future possibilities. So if you think about it, why would any client engage with us at all if they're hopeless, right? Uh, and so we've got to be able to address that. And too often, I think what has happened, especially with younger folks, is that um, you know they see no connection between themselves and their possibilities for the future. And so they, they psychologically disengage. Uh, actually, they psychologically disengage much younger before they might actually physically disengage from school. And many times it's because they see no hope for the future. So it happens with young people, but it happens, we know, throughout the lifespan for a variety of reasons. Hope can wax and wane. And with hope action theory, uh, a nice uh, summary, I think, of it, uh, is that hope action theory is holding the creative tension between what is in your life and what could be in your life and do and then doing something each day to close the gap between the two. So within that, there's uh, uh, human agency and the theory draws upon uh, work of people like Albert Bandura, uh, a former UBC student, by the way, and um, and uh, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim Hall and, um, you know, Rick Snyder. And it's, it's a very action oriented, thus the title. Many people think of hope as something they wish for, a passive kind of hope. That's not what this hope is about. This is about taking action. And the theory provides you as a practitioner with the framework that you can use and, and teach to your clients so that they can then use the framework to navigate their careers, not only in the in the immediate and the present sense, but across the life their lifespan. So it involves um, uh, focusing on things like uh, competencies, like engaging in self reflection, asking questions about your experiences. You know, life teaches us something each and every day, but if we don't pay attention, we're going to miss it. And a way to pay attention is to engage in self reflection and ask those important questions about what did I learn today? What has life taught me today? What has gone well today? What have I enjoyed today? What have I not enjoyed today, right? The full spectrum, because in asking those questions, you get important answers. As you get important answers, you develop self-clarity, which is the second part of hope action theory. And then you use that, the self-reflection and the self-clarity to engage in visioning for the, po the possibilities for the future. You know, what what uh, excites you about your future? What possibilities really intrigue you? Uh, what possibilities capture a bit of your 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 passion, right? And so we really focus on that. Life takes care of the probabilities. And too often, I think, in career coaching, we focused on probabilities. Not that that's uh, irrelevant. It's totally relevant. But it gets um, uh, uh, the whole idea of visioning possibilities can get shut down too quickly if if we don't, I think, engage in uh, the consideration of the possibilities that excite us. And then from those, we, uh, we, we focus on goal setting and planning, identifying options, and then making uh, setting goals and developing plans to achieve and then implement those options. And then once you implement any choice that you've made, there's always a gap between, think about any, any choice you've implemented in your entire life. You may have done all kinds of research in the world 
but when you got into that option, when you actually began to do it, you learn some things about that option that you didn't know before you did it. And as you get that new information, you've got to uh, adapt to that new information. It may confirm the choice you made or it may not. And either way, it's important to think about that new information and then to, to uh, uh, integrate it into your subsequent career planning. So those are the steps that we teach in a, in a variety, I think, of really creative and active engaging, active uh, engagement sorts of ways. And, uh, and again, I, I think what it does is provide this framework for you as a coach that you can draw upon as a practitioner, you can teach your clients, and they can use not only as they consider whatever their current, current career dilemmas may be, but then they can use throughout their lifespan. Now, now we use a pinwheel to sort of put the, all these steps around it, but around that pinwheel, we also have and the environmental factors. And you've got, uh, you know, something makes it go. Something, something the, the wind blows and it blows in certain directions. And so it's kind of a vibrancy to this model as well. And uh, and we're uh, in, in the course, we're going to sort of show you the model, but we're also going to then start talking about so what is it, you know, how do you assess this? And we've got an inventory called the Hope Action Inventory that has been used in lots of different uh, places. Uh, we also have a whole bunch of research that we've done, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of that, or at least expose you to it and show you what we've done with different kinds of groups. Like uh, we've worked with uh, immigrant professionals, we've worked with uh, refugees, we've worked regular clients, uh, people, indigenous people. We're currently doing a study with people dealing with addictions issues. Uh, on it goes. We've sort of been working with lots of different things and, and checking out to see not only is there a theory here, but there's also then how do you make it work? How do you, how do you, how do we get practical with this? And so that's a real key element in the course, I think, is the practical component of making doing something with it because it is action oriented and it's it, the focus is to say well you know not just what i'm thinking but it's also what am i going to do about it how do i make it work i, I wonder lawrence maybe um just put you or kristen could you tell us a little bit about the course i mean from the from the eye or the the beholder or the person who's participating in it uh what was the experience like from your perspective sure happy to um I think uh, for me, I don't know about the people that are on this call, but um, one thing about the structure of the course was very familiar because it's um, set up very similar to the UBC organizational coaching program. And so there's, all, there's different opportunities for learning and different ways of interacting with the material. Um, and that worked really well for me. Um, so I enjoyed that part of it. Um, and obviously lots of different people come. I expected everyone else to be a coach, but that's not the case. Um, so with the people on this call, you may be coming from different uh, types of professions, but this work is still applicable. You know, I, I think of my learning experiences kind of divided into three different categories. One is the whole the hope action theory and then the inventory that I use with clients, which feeds into that, and you'll learn more about that. And then for me personally, um, the, there's such a um, preponderance in a really great way of talking about metaphors um, mm -hmm. and the impact of metaphors in a variety of different ways. And it really um, opened my eyes and I see them so much more clearly than I used to. And I pluck them out of conversation. Um, and that's really helpful from a coaching perspective. I'm a coach. Um, and then the, the third bucket for me really is all the other tools, which is <laughs> lumping a lot of stuff together, but there's many different practical tools. And that's one of the things that I um, walked away thinking, okay, well now I've got this, 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 and this. And there's a variety of different tools and for me, there's a few that really spoke to me that I use frequently, and they may not be the same as for everyone else, but there's a toolbox um, from which you can pull um, a variety of different um, tools that you can adapt 
to work with the way that you function with your clients. So that's my summary, Norm. How's that? Okay, that sounds good. That's great, Chris, do you want to add to that or say anything from your perspective? Well, uh, thank you, Professor Amson, and also uh, Professor Niles. Um, so I think I made a mistake at the very beginning because I saw Frank here. So Frank was also facilitating the UBC organizational uh, coaching certificate, that program. I was the alumni of that program. Yeah. So honestly, oh, today, okay, okay. I'm learning oh, okay. for this program because I'm really, really interested in this program. I attended the session okay. led by Andrea. Um, so I think uh, together with Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer is also the alumni of the UBC Organizational Coaching Program. So that session was so impressive. I think, okay. you know, um, because for me personally, um, uh, I'm an, I, I've been working in HR for 20 years. And most of the time I focus on the individual's development. So you can imagine that I'm so passionate with people's development. And also, so when I, you know, reach out to my network, asking for clients, coaching clients, almost all of my clients reach out to me for their career, you know, uh, questions, problems, all their thoughts. So I'm thinking that, you know, I hope that, I hope <laughs> that I can learn more in this uh, program so that I can better serve my clients. Career is so important. It's not only for the individual, but for their families, for their teams, for their organizations. And also personally, I have three kids. Um, so two of them are now in the secondary school. Mm. They are thinking about their career. So I think, you know, if I can learn something I'm from this program about, as you know, that you all have shared, the, the theory and also how to make it work. I love this so much. The practical part, how mm -hmm. to uh, apply the these theories. I think that will be, you know, awesome. Not only for my own professional life as a coach, as an HR, but also for my personal life as a mom. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I I think one thing that's true about all three of us who teach this course is our primary concern and focus is on. Uh, uh, teaching things that can be useful to you as practitioners. You know, I think th all three of us would get a little bit bored if all we did was talk about theory and you would get bored too, probably. But our focus is on how can we be, be useful to you as practitioners? We think that's what the, the course really does is focus on providing you with useful resources. And as Lauren said, a toolbox, toolkit yeah. that you can draw from. Maybe a little bit about what folks can expect in the course just a little bit about the specific structure of the course would be useful so it's about uh, uh, six to eight hours of uh, overall ev everything included six to eight hours of coursework a week so uh, just to give you a ballpark related to that there are uh, two hours of live sessions each week that are you know obviously so synchronous that uh, Norm, Andrew, and I are, are involved in uh, delivering. You spend about two hours a week in uh, your learning triads that uh, provides you with the opportunity to apply what you've learned, what you are learning. And, uh, and then each one of the three of us will on occasion come into the learning triad and, and do some uh, uh, coaching with you, respond to questions some observations, some feedback, that kind of thing. So we're involved with that as well. In terms of uh, just regular sorts of assignments, projects to engage in relative to the resources we're uh, demonstrating and applying in the course and uh, maybe assessments for you to complete, it takes about, give or take, maybe about an hour a week uh, as part of that six to eight hours total, so six to eight hours total. Um, and then um, you know, working with your client, it's about uh, maybe, you know, 45, 50 minutes, a week, an hour a week. Um, and then um, just sort of uh, going over the, the course content for any particular week, that, that could take you about an hour. So again, total, it's going to vary uh, per person. And it's about six to eight hours a week. Some people wonder about, so what, what happens if something comes up? I can't make a particular week. 
do I do I miss that week's content? We record all the sessions and make those available to you in case something like that happens. Uh, so, so it's really uh, what we really are focused on a cohort model. I think that works well in terms of uh, learning with people. You know, learning I think should be something that happens with people. It shouldn't be something anyone does to people or for people. It's with people, and so the cohort model I think facilitates that uh, asynchronous and synchronous uh, sessions, as we noted, the learning triads, and then whatever mentorship that we can provide to you beyond what happens in the course. We're typically available to help address questions and and uh, that kind of thing. So, Norm, what else? Oh, do you want the dates? Sure. <laughs> okay, so so the the early bird the early bird rate ends on March twenty fifth. The pre work for the course, so you do some uh, basic and foundational work before the the uh, sessions actually begin, and that that the pre work uh, starts on April twenty second, and then the course itself, where we're meeting for two hours a week, and live sessions and that kind of thing. That begins on April 29th and, and runs through June 23rd. So that's the eight weeks. So let's see if that works for you. One what of else? the things I think we yeah. really want to stress with this course is the fact that this is a bit of a deep dive course. I mean, some people, you know, throw a light and run a bunch of, do all kinds of things. They're just, the numbers that, that Skip was mentioning there, they're real. You know, like, uh, so, I mean, I guess as people tech and talking about the course, we want you to come because I think it's worth it. And I think you're going to really enjoy the content and everything. But it is, um, uh, it is something that, you know, you really have to commit to and put, put some work into it. And the expectation, you know, to read and to get, I think there's a, a rich uh, amount of information in the course. I mean, just the, the the amount of video uh, access we give you is is really kind of something uh, uh, I think that could be quite helpful. Plus all these sessions, and then you're working in the small groups, so there's lots of uh, aspects there. Uh, now there's a see other question here from Danielle: Where are the live sessions, and when are they? Um, I think the Th Thursday the evenings. One. Yep, no? Thursday. Thursday. I'm sorry for you guys. Yeah. It's evening. It's evening for me. <laughs> it's uh, Thursday afternoons uh, for you guys once that starts. And so uh, let's Four see. Thursday is 3.30 to, uh, it's going to be 3.30 to 5.30 your time. Okay. 3.30 to 5.30. 3.30 to 5.30 your time on Thursdays. Uh, Pacific time, Vancouver time. Yep. Yep. That's 3.30 to 5.30. Okay. So I think, you know, again, the idea that, uh, you know, we, we're going to be also looking a lot. I mean, you mentioned metaphors. I think there's a lot of material in here that's might be kind of really interesting to explore. I think metaphors is certainly one of them that I, I key on. Uh, but there's also ideas like liminal space, you know, that we kind of explore that whole idea of, of, of doing something with that and different kinds of exercises, not just the, the usual something called vantage points where you get people walking around, walking the problem and some things you may not have seen before uh, for people who are new uh, to this, that, uh, you know, you can do some work with this, with this theory, with this idea that uh, takes people into a different sort of space. So there is a lot of, you know, I, I think we kind of develop it every year. We keep, we keep building on it, but um I think the theory is there. I think the practical exercise is lots of act opportunities to sort of try things out. To how did it work? And the clientele that you're working with, um, I mean, the applicability of this course is something that you can use with students. Uh, you can use it with adults um, of, of all ages. You know, I mean, you, you could talk. Uh, so I think that's that's one of its strengths is the fact that it is such a wide brush in terms of uh, touching on all those different elements, but you, you're going to have to work for it. I mean, that's uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I think that's in there. I mean, would you agree with me, Lawrence, if I, have I said this correctly, did you work for it? 
Absolutely. But I came in expecting that, um, you know, it, it, it builds as you go. Um, and so there's tremendous value in staying on top of it. Um, and, but someone had asked the question, what happens if, you know, if you miss a week, you can catch up. It's not the end of the world. Um, but it's the course is structured in a way that, um, doing the work as you go is going to, keep you um, a feeling less stressed if that stresses you having um, assignments etc but it also just maintains a level of um, what's the word uh, engagement um, mm -hmm. with the entire program so uh, it's mm -hmm. definitely work but I, okay I'm, I'm not a shill honestly <laughs> I'm here <laughs> because I really believe in this and I thought the course was really fun um, yes it's work but it's lots of fun and the whole um feel of it is is um it's not uptight i mean you, you can see the way that skip and norma are, and andrea is very um uh, much the same um we uh, it was really fun and you meet lots of different people for me unexpectedly and um i i had a really good time and i use it all the time now i wanted to say one thing skip and norma hope you don't um, disagree with me i okay. use the hope action theory outside of the career coaching realm oh yeah sure all, all the time it's you know that's the way that you know that was uh, your in, intention around um the work that you did originally but it's applicable way beyond that mm -hmm. so i use it with um pretty much every single client whether it's a career coaching session or not I'm so glad you said that, Lawrence. That was sort of a, a serendipitous result, I think, of, of, of uh, developing the theory and so forth. That is to say, we did focus on career initially, and, and that's still probably the primary use of it. But just like you said, Lawrence, and people started talking to us about, you know, this applies to far more than just <laughs> career development. You know, this applies to you can apply this to life and relationships and and all kinds of things. And so it's a it's a, I think that's a a sign of a robust uh, model that has that sort of applicability. And and you mentioned earlier, Lawrence, the Hope Action Inventory, just a little bit about that. So uh, the Hope Action Inventory is a 28 item inventory. It takes about 10 minutes to complete. And what it does is it provides a, a quick snapshot for your clients and for you as the practitioner to say, okay, so um, where's the where's the client in terms of their level of hope? That's good to know before you go into a session with a client, right? You can see how that might be helpful to have a sense of before even meeting your client in for the first session or to measure that across sessions to see is it increasing, decreasing, what's going on, and really understand that. But the same thing with all the other competencies that are part of the hope action theory, self-reflection, self-clarity, visioning, et cetera. So you can get a sense of where are the client's strengths? You know, uh, if they're, if for instance, if, if they're high in, um, let's say they're high in vision, visioning, but low in self-clarity, well, as a practitioner, I'd say, well, gosh, to, uh, visioning requires you to use what you know to be true about yourself to create uh, ideas about future possibilities that excite you. But if they're low on self-clarity, which could have, I mean, that has happened with clients, uh, low on self-clarity, what are they basing their visioning on? If low on self-clarity, they're, they're saying, we don't, I don't really know that much about myself. So that's sort of a, a way you could say, well, geez, maybe we need to back up a little bit and ask some questions about self-clarity and help the client develop more clarity in terms of what's really essential for them and then see where that leads in terms of the visioning. That's just one little example of ways you can take the snapshot of the results from the Hope Action Inventory and, and get an idea for where it might be areas for growth, strengths that you can use, you can draw upon as a coach to help your clients move forward as they develop, uh, uh, strengthen their, their their competencies in the other areas. And then again, uh, you can also use this throughout your work with your clients, certainly at the beginning and at the end to see where they've developed and where they what gains they've made. Uh, so it's, it's really, I think, a very useful tool 
that is essential in many ways to applying uh, this model, this framework in your career, in your coaching. I just noticed that some of the questions are like, am I trained as a career coach after taking this class? Um, it's not that, that uh, you know, that isn't the focus of this course to train you as a career coach. And you can say, well, that's what I have now. You will get a certification if you complete it for hope, action, theory, and practice. And we have uh, people around the world who have that certification. And I think you get a certificate of completion from UBC that you've taken this course. Mm -hmm. But uh, the actual, um, you know, sort of being certified as a career coach is something that UBC doesn't, it runs a year long uh, program to, to do that. Uh, so it, this is, is, is an add on. It's something that, you know, many people who take uh, the um, UBC program will then sort of add this on to their understanding and they learn some new concepts through this course. It's uh, we've had people from uh, human resources who take it and some of them are just wanting to sort of get their skills up a little bit. Uh, counselors sometimes take the course. So it, it does, you know, it, it applies in lots of different situations, but don't uh, it isn't sort of like there yeah, I'm finished learning. I got the certificate now for being a, a coach as a result of taking it. It's sort of one element in a process uh, in order to get that certification. If you're a member of the, of the International Coach Federation, you do earn, through taking this course, you do earn 20 continuing uh, coach education units for, from the International Coach Federation. So, uh, so in that way, it, it can be something that can help you relative to uh, your, your uh, continuation as a, as a coach. Um, Kristen, you asked an interesting question around uh, in terms of clients and how many people you need to work with. Basically, we ask you to find one client that you can work with in the course and to sort of try things out, you know, and have somebody who's willing to have you try things out. And so you'll be introduced to different uh, techniques and strategies. And so you try things out with them. And uh, the group your small group, your triad working group will work with you on that. We come in as uh, mentors to, into those sessions on occasion, and we will help you sort of figuring things out. <clears throat> but the idea is to sort of uh, work through it in that way. Um, and then at the end, to do kind of a summary, tell us about your experience and in, in what, what, what that was like for you and, uh, what you accomplished and uh, the different kinds of techniques that you use. I think an interesting uh, byproduct of this course, because of the content, because of what happens in the sessions, the live sessions and the assignments and so forth. I think an interesting thing that happens for people is yes, they learn, uh, obviously they get resources they can use in coaching and working with clients, but a lot of people uh, I, I would be surprised if anybody wouldn't say this who took this course. And again, Lawrence, you can you can agree or disagree with this. But I think in taking the course and doing the and completing the assignments and doing the exercises and so forth, you also get a lot out of this personally. I think it 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 can uh, add to your own uh, insight, your personal growth, your own career development. So it's almost like yes, you're learning how to. You're learning tools you can use with others, but you're also learning for yourself in this experience. Is that accurate, Lawrence? I should have said that. Yes. <laughs> Especially, I mean, for me, I really like the reflective papers because mm. you're literally reflecting on your learning and about yourself. And that's a, a constant process. And um, thanks for reminding me about that part, Skip. That was really sure, sure. wonderful as well. Yeah. Great. It's a question here from uh, about um, this cl the class schedule. And the, the group as a whole meets on Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, but then there are there is another session that you would because you'll be working in small groups, uh, 
the group of three people might decide to, you know, let's have a session on Wednesday or something like that, a time that's convenient for, for you as a group. So you'll be part of the whole group on the Thursday, but then find some other time in the week where you can sort of meet and work on talking about your clients and what you've been doing and maybe practicing some uh, some of the exercises within that two hour window. So those are probably your two times that you're going to be meeting um, once as part of the whole group and, the, and another time at your convenience. And there, there was a question here about where is it? And where are we? <laughs> you talk a little bit about that. Um, Skip, you're in, uh, are you in Pennsylvania? I, mean, today? I am, I am in Williamsburg, Virginia. Williamsburg, Virginia today. Okay. In the United States. Yep. You bet. Yep. And you're on, are you on Saturna? I'm on Saturna Island. So I'm on one of the Gulf Islands, um, close to Victoria and, uh, and Andrea, she will be coming from, uh, Richmond. So, we're in three different locations. Obviously, it's online. Uh, we don't get together like as a group to sort of run the course. We we do this all online. But um, and you know, and we're also available. Like you know, the, we have these specific times that uh, the groups meet and so on. But if you have questions or you have things you want to ask us or throw our way, we're more than happy more than willing to help you sort of sort through that. And uh, if you can't figure out, you know, if it's a technical issue or if it's a, you know, I don't know how to, I can't get a client or whatever, what kind of, what can I do about this? Uh, we're, we're more than willing to sort of work with you and help you um, sort of solve things as, as they emerge in that time period. I think too, I, I mean, come on with this hard guy sort of stance of you know it's going to be tough work in this course and things like that but we also understand for that life happens you know and we do get people who uh they can't make it for a session you know um and we're quite understanding and say these are all all our um live sessions are you know uh, videotaped and you you can get access to that afterwards or whatever and uh, and sometimes things happen and the people say, well, I can't quite get to this right now or whatever. And uh, that's something that um, also uh, we understand, we work with you around. Um, one more expectation I think I, that doesn't get talked about is there is kind of uh, the expectation will set up this um, LinkedIn group, group that uh, you post, uh, Every week you'll be expected to put a post in terms of uh, put uh, forward a post in terms of what your experience has been that week, what you're thinking about, a question for the group, and you'll also be expected to kind of maybe look at a few others and sort of respond to the kind of things that they're doing. So this is another piece of it. I don't know what what was your experience with that, Lawrence? Are you? Uh... I, well, I was very used to that because um, Kristen and Jennifer will know that that's way that the organizational coaching program is structured as well so but it, it creates conversation and it's interesting to see what people how they comment on and what you put out there and vice versa and sometimes it can go on quite a while but it's always really um helpful and done in a incredibly positive way and it's all about the learning that comes from that I think it's a real opportunity to meet a lot of different people and to hear from them and to hear from very different, because we get people who will join this course, uh, not just from the Vancouver area. I mean, they come from basically, uh, I mean, we don't know where they're going to come from, but I would suspect in the past, I mean, you're going to get people uh, from the U.S., you're going to get people from uh, Asia, uh, you might get some people from Europe, um, you're going to get a lot of it, this course has kind of an international flavor to it. So you will find people that, uh, you know, really from around the globe will, will participate in this. And that's kind of an interesting experience in itself, just to sort of be with people who, you know, uh, um, you know, they're working in New Zealand. Well, what's it like in New Zealand, you know, and what are you doing? And what are you, what are you thinking about and all this kind of thing? And uh, how does that compare to career coaching that we're doing here in Canada or in the U S and things like this? 
any um okay are there any elements of career coaching for individuals with disabilities in the course um certainly i think that would be an interesting topic uh, i in a week's time my one of my doctoral students is going to graduate and she, and he um he's a person with uh, visual impairment and uh, so we're having to learn how to do a you know dissertation and all this kind of work uh, with somebody who who can't see and you know all that all that that involves so i I'd, I'd be happy to talk about uh, disability issues and how we kind of work with people in this. Uh, I certainly believe that the course material fits well, um, but also, um, you know, there are particular issues and there are things that come up that you sort of uh, don't don't think about. And so having that discussion and sharing experiences, I think uh, could be really helpful. And so, I mean, we're open to having those kind of things be discussed or being brought up or whatever and uh, and sort of taking a run at it. So, um, you know, that's something uh, that we would take on and, and you can expect through a course like this. Yeah, I'd, I'd say essentially each person brings their own particular interests relative to client populations and so forth. And and uh, we've we had uh, one person who uh, uh, she's in Europe now, but she had a strong interest in working with military and working with the veterans and so forth. So she took what she learned and and consulted with us both during the course and outside of the course. And she really developed a, a, a amazing model of hope action uh, theory, applying hope action theory with military veterans and, and their families. We had another person speaking more directly to the question uh, from Australia, who her entire work is focused on, in the area of vocational rehabilitation counseling. And so she works with clients with a wide range of disabilities. And she's taken, she's probably one of the strongest advocates of hope action theory that we have in terms of somebody that's taken this class and just really fallen in love with it and uses it, as Lawrence is saying, and kind of like in every way that she can. But her focus is on working with clients with disabilities. And uh, and she has found the theory to be incredibly useful. Again, uh, she's a person that we uh, uh, worked with both uh, during the class session and, uh, and then outside of class as well to help her develop her model of applying hope action theory with her particular clients of interest. So there's plenty of space for that. And, uh, uh, it, and it's important. I think it's uh, important, an important element of the class that you bring your own focus to it and, and and enter that into our conversations and discussions so that we can talk about ways to make it useful uh, to the clients that you work with. I think that's essential. So we really encourage that kind of conversation and discussion and participate with you in looking at those possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things I think that also we're building with this is we are building a kind of a community, a community of people who've had uh, experiences with hope action theory in practice. And of course, that incorporates a lot of people who have been part of the coaching program at UBC. And um, we've, you know, uh, really been... Um, we enjoy that idea of sort of getting a group of learners together and we've had ongoing contact with a number of people over the over the years i, I think we've been running courses this particular course this will only be its second time but, but we've been running courses on hope action theory now for about five years and uh you know so we're building up a number of people from different situations and we're and we're happy to and we're happy to give out our email address uh somebody wants to connect here uh caleb with uh um you know it, it it's uh i mean i can put that into the chat i guess the ne amundsen at gmail.com so it's not uh hard to to get in touch with us but we would i mean we're happy to talk about you talk about uh you know any aspects both within the course, outside of the course, if, if it would be helpful for you. My, my email is in the chat, so happy to 
keep the conversations going for sure. All right, I got to do that now. What what other what other questions? Speaking of visual impairments, I got I got to get Norm to read the questions because I can't read that. I can't see it. Oh, and so uh, <laughs> um, so I'm not ignoring them. I, I just uh, visually I can't see it. Yeah, I think, um, let's see, if we could, we've got, okay, there's a question here for you, Skip, about, yeah. uh, I think the ICF hours, are there, mm -hmm. any, Jennifer is saying, are there formal mentorship structures in this program that can be counted as membership hours for ICF credential renewal? If so, how many hours would be achieved mm -hmm. by the end of this program? Hmm. I don't think that's anything that we have formally we can in. ask Andrea. Andrea would be a good person to yeah. uh, kind of connect with about that because she's, uh, you know, obviously very involved in um, in co the coaching federation. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. so, and yeah. Actually, career development group in that in that uh, association. So, person, I think, to talk to you about that. And uh, yeah. Did we get all the questions, Norm? Any anything else? Any last uh, thoughts or things that? Uh... Can I just ask a couple questions? Yeah, sure. please do. Yeah. Sure. So, um, again, like Kristen said, we've come from the uh, the UBC. Um, organizational coaching certificate program. So we're probably coming from the lens of what we experienced there. And that's where some of our questions are coming from. Sure. Um, in terms of the clients, I'm assuming we have to get our own clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there a minimum number of hours that you need to coach them by the end? So that's an hour a week, basically, once you start meeting. That's, that's kind of the ex expectation for it, really. Okay, so it would be six hours total, eight hours yeah. total. Yeah, something like that. Yep, as soon as you can get the client and yeah, okay. start meeting. Yeah, yeah. And then the last question is, do you have Andrea's email address? Would you be able to provide that if we had some specific questions for her around the ICF piece? Well, her father better have it. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Thank you. Hang on here. Okay. I've got two Andreas, one from Romania. We'll, we won't give you that one. Uh, I have it, Norm. I'm just going to put it in the chat. Okay. You're going to put it in the chat? Great. Yeah. Thanks, Lawrence. No worries. We won't tell Andrea her father couldn't come up with her email address. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I just get the reply. <laughs> yeah, Andrea, Andrea is really a great I mean, you were going to enjoy meeting Andrea. And uh, and I, I think she's got a lot of, you know, she really understands the International Coaching Federation and, you know, their requirements and all this sort of thing. She... Uh, and she's really the one that uh, does a lot of the work. Oh. Did we lose Norm? He's gone. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, we're we're usually uh uh you know tougher than this, folks. <laughs> Yeah, we, by the way, last week we were here and ready to go, just so you all know. <laughs> we were ready to go, but we didn't have access. We couldn't get into the room. They didn't give us access. So that's what was happening. We were probably just as frustrated as you were in terms of making that happen. So I uh, really appreciate folks coming back this week and uh, joining in. And 
And uh, like I said, we can uh, certainly keep the conversation going. And you may uh, think of a question later today, tomorrow, whenever, uh, that would be important for you to have the information to make a decision about this course. And so please uh, don't don't sit on those kinds of questions. Uh, connect with us, ask the questions, and, and we want you to make, you know, it's just like with any kind of uh, uh, career coaching. I think uh, our responsibility is to help clients make informed choices and to empower them to implement those choices in their lives. And same with this. We want you to make an informed choice. And uh, and if this is a course that lines up for you, then fantastic. And we think you'll be happy you you chose to join in. But there could be reasons why it wouldn't work for you uh, this time or, or or maybe just in general. But um, I, I've I've had a lot of fun doing this work with folks and and working with uh, 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 folks such as Lawrence and others and and really learning alongside of everybody. So uh, we do try to keep it um, in, engaging. And, uh, you know, we, I think all three of us believe that you can take what you do very seriously and still have a lot of fun doing it. And in fact, I would, uh, from my perspective, if, if that's not happening, something's wrong. So, um, so that we do approach the course that way and uh, we take it seriously, but we try to have fun and uh, and uh, really be as supportive as we can in this whole process. So, any other any other questions? Um, sorry, Spencer, I have a last yeah. question. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, so, uh, for our um, the coaching practice with our clients. Yes. Uh, do we need to record them or, you know, write any kind of things for as the reflection? Yeah. yeah. As Great. Jennifer said, because this is a practice for the organizational coaching program. So I'm really curious, you know, about yeah. the practice here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. Great questions. I'm going to just ask Lawrence, did you re did you record sessions that you did? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not required. I I, I was just curious because I thought, man, maybe some people did and some people didn't. It's not required by us. What yeah. does happen is at the end, though, you do write up your case, basically. And so you do. So even if you don't record your sessions, certainly taking some notes, I think, as the mm -hmm. sessions happen, you know, following a session and so that you'll be able to write up your summary at the end. That's essentially uh, the evaluation is really based on kind of how you worked with your client, how you implemented, describing how you implemented what you learned in the course in your work with your client. Um, you know, what you what you generally feel like you learned in the course. That That's sort of the final evaluation, so to speak. So, uh, and almost everybody gets at least a B. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. There are no grades. There are no it's not, it's, not, it's not that kind of course. It's not that kind of course. So no worries on that. <laughs> Folks do well. There there are no grades. And sometimes I do a joke like that and then be, oh, is he serious? There are no grades like that. It's a sort of a pass fail thing. Lawrence, sure. can I ask you a question? Sure. So it's sounding like you did the C, the um, organizational coaching program first, and then did this program because uh -huh. you're not in there. So prior to doing this program, like, is was career coaching your natural stream in coaching to begin with, or? Was that something you had an interest in, took this program, and at the end of this program, you felt well-equipped to do career coaching with clients? <laughs> okay. Um, I think that uh, for me, what I noticed was practically every client that I um, worked with, no matter where they came from, um, there was always some element of career involved in the conversation. And so this just seemed like a natural adjunct. I don't call myself a career coach. Um, I don't. 
Um, but I feel very able to um, work with clients on a variety of topics, but around career, um, definitely. Um, and this really enhanced my um, sense of confidence around that work, if, if that's what you mean. Yeah, that's helpful because I think that's what I'm finding is that so many clients come forward with career elements. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, you end up feeling like you're going into the realm of career coaching, which raises the question of, am I, am I qualified to do this? <laughs> I certainly qualified to coach, but is there something more I need to know in order to feel that competence to say, okay, this is an area I... I can go down the road with you on. You know, that, that famous career coach, uh, Sigmund Freud said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> said the two most important things in life focus around love and work. And I think that it, one way or another, you know, those topics generally kind of filter their way into all kinds of coaching. Any other questions, Norm? I see you got the, your power back on and Saturna Island living, right? I'm muted. Oh, there but, you go. Uh, there you yeah, go. there we go. There, there you go. go. Yeah, sorry so, about that. It was uh, uh, you got power back now. So, yeah, good. Any other questions from folks? Mm -hmm. You can ask a question. You don't. You, you okay. want just come off mute. There you go. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I want to ask a question. So, Great. from your perspective, uh, what are the most important qualities for a career coach? Oh. You know, uh, I'll respond, well, and Norm can respond as well, but. For sure. me, for me, it's um, I think there there are a couple of really essential elements for effective coaching of 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 uh, any kind. You know, often there's there's a saying that often uh, uh, you know that many clients don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. What that really suggests is that having the capacity to for clients uh, the sense that they matter to you as the coach that uh, you you care about what happens to them you have what some people refer to as empathy for them for their situation for uh, the concerns that they're addressing and so forth so that you establish that kind of mattering climate between yourself that mattering relationship between yourself and the client and I think that's sort of essential to be able to do that. And there are some basic uh, sort of skill sets that are, uh, are effective for making that happen. And we talk about uh, those some of those kinds of things in this course. I think also having an understanding of uh, how you're going to work with a client is important so that you're not uh, simply sort of making it up as you go along, but you have a framework that you're working from that's sort of guiding you as a coach. And then the, the client can also then make use of that framework. And clearly this course, this course provides that to you as a, a student in the course and for your work as a coach with your client. So you have, uh, you have that quality of being able to be empathic, create a, ma a mattering relationship, client senses that they matter to you and that helps with their engagement and so forth and that uh, you seem to know what you're doing you, you have a framework that you're working from you have a sense of where this could go as you collaborate with the client and and working with them to help them achieve their goals and you're uh you're an effective listener you know sometimes we talk too much as coaches and I think that uh, move too quickly towards advice. And I always tell my students, if it was simply a matter of giving a person advice, then uh, you never, you probably never would have met them as a coach because they would have figured it out. 
Most people are smart people. They can figure it out. So it's more than advice. And so uh, I think sometimes saying, understanding that, you know, I want to really listen to the client, understand their situation, understanding what it is they're trying to address in their work with you, and then uh, helping them unpack that through good listening and having a model. Again, I think hope action theory is a, I would say this, wouldn't I? But I think it's an excellent framework for uh, uh, working with clients as they work through, as they navigate whatever their dilemmas might be in career and otherwise. Gonna just uh, jump in here for a moment, just acknowledging it's uh, it's one o'clock right now, Pacific time, it's an hour. If you need to get someplace, I want to say thank you for joining us. And thanks again to uh, Skip and Norm for uh, talking about the program and sharing uh, their insights and to Lawrence who's now uh, left us. Um, hey, if um, there are any remaining questions, we'll stop the recording now, but if you have anything you wanna hang out online here for a couple minutes, um, I'll, I'll hang around for a little bit, uh, maybe skip and norm. Well, otherwise, sure, um, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fine. Thank you. Okay. Everybody. Well, uh, thanks for joining us and, um, you can check out the, the extended learning website and you'll, you'll see the course information and, uh, registration there. And we'll look forward to, uh, seeing some of you in this upcoming session. Thank, Thank you for being here. Everyone. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you.